Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. Welcome to a, a great pleasure, personal pleasure. Welcome to uh, Conversations, a dear friend of mine from way back. We go back together in public access television programming, and that's Mel Berkowitz, and he's a biologist. And I think he does a lot of work uh, with I I Queens uh, yes. and the system out in Queens, and he's been doing public access for a long time. And he's been studying biology even longer than that. And we're going to talk about some of that. And it's a great pleasure to welcome you, Mel. I haven't talked with you on, the t on tape for a long time. Welcome to Conversation. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah. Let's share your own, the Mel Beckerwitz story. We're born and raised, family a little bit, and education. Well, we can talk about uh, biology, Darwin, evolution, sure. and a lot of other matters, as well as some politics, perhaps. But your own background, please. Well. I grew up in a family that came here 100 years ago, mm -hmm. originally on my mother's side, Romania, and the other side, Ukraine and Belarus. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, my grandmother grew up, they didn't know each other in Europe, mm -hmm. but she grew up in the same small town as Sophie Tucker. I'll be darned. That's we real. have pictures of her mm -hmm. with Sophie Tucker here, obviously. <laughs> yes, right, 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 right. So they met uh, at a party. and. Mm -hmm. uh, they sort of became fast friends. Mm -hmm. and they took pictures of her. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. grandmother spoke five languages. Wow. Uh, Russian, Yiddish, English, of course, Ukraine, Polish, and probably maybe even French, and she spoke several dialects. Wow. Yeah. The government in World War I wanted her to work as an interpreter. I would think. But she had six children to raise. So well, that's a pretty big, a, that's and a, a handful, seventh one yeah. later on. Yeah, right, right, right. So I come from a background there. Mm -hmm. And on my mother's side, her youngest sister became active in the American Labor Party. Okay. And I was inundated with daily workers mm -hmm. and uh, communist philosophy. Uh -huh. And I used to think all capitalists were fat pigs from uh -huh. the com uh, pictures, the cartoons, and the <laughs> yes, daily worker. Right, right, right. I had so, overcome that. So there was political consciousness in the family. It was a warm and welcoming context and encouraging of intellectual inquiry. Oh, yes. And, yeah, oh, right. Yes. That's important. As yeah. a matter of fact, the topic on evolution, my aunt bought me a, a thin child book, child-directed um, book on evolution, mm -hmm. 1946, when I was nine. Yeah, okay, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's so much going on. and. Uh, you you did you did uh, some you you did you do you know the term autodidact uh, that you yeah. teach yourself sort right. of less because you're interested in mm -hmm. that and if you got the right family setting that's really a context for just learning 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 without mm -hmm. necessarily fitting into an academic prescribed right. thing that you have to do. My father was self-taught. He taught himself yeah. radio and TV repair. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And while I didn't aim for that uh, yeah. career. Uh, I had to do a lot of self-teaching once I started majoring in chemistry. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. And then you don't learn anything in school. Let me point that out. Okay. You're learning. Listen, kiddies. Listen, kiddies. You're learning <laughs> what the teacher was taught when mm. that teacher was a student. That's true, yeah. yeah. When I went to work in research, uh -huh. then I really learned all about the nature of science. Uh-huh. Uh, and research in the private sector, education. No, in medical school. Medical in medical school. Okay. Yeah, medical institutions. Yeah. Uh huh. And I took a graduate course. Uh, th the topic was implicit learning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was a one credit course. I did my own work for it, mm -hmm. but the teacher was involved, and in, the professor was involved in implicit learning, which means that if you're active in something, uh -huh. you pick up things unconsciously right, that right. Uh, leads you to uh, further knowledge. I wonder if that could be related. We were speaking before the camera. We can speak about, about information overload. There's so much coming now. We're coming. The Internet is like some sort of a miracle of having all this, and it's just getting started. But well, the term is autodidact, and the term is uh, pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. Information, uh, Norbert Wiener said, that. information overload mm -hmm. permits pattern, so people can be thinking systems or whole systems rather than just a specialized something they focus on. Yeah, uh, the Perhaps. most brilliant scientist, the masters, takes other people's work and makes sense out of what they've done recognizes patterns between the various specializations. It seems there's a lot of reductionism going on now in terms of the you educational process. You have to reduce process. because you have to s uh, s siphon off what's important and what's 
and discard what's not important. Well, you think you do that through specialization, or can you do that through, instead of specializing in one thing, you relate the knowledge of that thing, or is that in relationship to something else, to something else, to something else, and you think in terms of a pattern between various subsystems. Well, you have to think in terms of pattern. Yeah. But let me make it clear, yeah. a working scientist yes. focus has to focus on a very narrow area. I learned that from fellow scientists. Why do you think that is? And what's They just space? don't have the time, they don't have, when they're a student, yeah. graduate yeah. student, yeah, right. they're learning everything. Uh, as soon as okay. they go into an actual research project, yeah. their knowledge and mentality focuses on a very narrow area. I, I know, I hear you saying that, but is there any room for people who take that narrow focus area and then put it in terms of a larger pattern? Like, oh, they have to. They'd never gotten to the genome if there weren't yeah. some people yeah. thinking pattern. They you know? have to. Yeah. They have to because you've got to integrate the specific information yeah. into the larger picture. Right, right. Uh, I could recommend a book that was published 40 years ago. Please do. It's called The Lives of a Human Cell. Is that what? Lewis Thomas? That's right. Lewis, I did a program with Lewis Thomas. He was great. Yes. He was really good. We got one from way so back the in the So the doctors I worked with on yeah. research was the ones they recommended to people to read. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah, he was It's, wonderful. of course, somewhat out of date, Yeah. but he explained all the information that scientists accumulate about the cell yeah, and, uh, and made it into an uh, uh, understandable pattern. Yeah, some people can, E.L. Wilson also it w concentrates, I think, well, on grasshoppers. Wilson. Yeah. You're not, not so, uh, you don't A lot of people it. aren't too, and it's not my just judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, Consilience, he yeah. did. Then he, but they do get a specialization. Yeah. He, yeah, he specialized on insect behavior. That's right. But yeah. he tried to extrapolate it to human behavior, and it wasn't as pertinent. Mm. It wasn't well, it, as valuable. It is difficult to get at that because if you go down to if you're if you're focusing on something specialized, then a pe period makes the difference. Or legal, legal. If you get a, a semicolon, it results in millions of dollars. But that is, uh, you know, uh, it has to be, and that kind of exactitude, or writing code, or the computer now, it's logical. Oh, it yeah, has, right Everything has to work, you know? I, 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 it has to be accurate. I took uh, early programming, and I realized, yeah. uh -huh. if you put a comma in the wrong place, that yeah. screwed up the whole world. It screws up the whole algorithm, And, yeah. and speaking about legal, I yeah, was invited to a law meeting mm -hmm. in Queens, mm -hmm. Bar Association meeting, mm -hmm. And I could see them arguing over one word. Right. The right. implications, the context. Yeah, right. And, and that was very specific. And one of the things that I just threw out there is that some of this specialization is done in order it, it, that people are <coughs> getting a certificate in some area of specialization that's going to give them a license or do something which is a professional that will get them some money. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that's the major overriding uh, honey or nectar or source of understanding human behavior is the need that people have to do something to get money or recognition. I'm not sure if they go together. Well, a lot of the scientists in the early part of the 20th century didn't do it for the money mm. because okay. they came from inherited wealth. So they Out could of feudalism, huh? Yeah. yeah. So they could devote their laboratory work, their research, and without worrying about an income. How would you like it if the whole world could go do whatever they want to do without worrying about income? Is that dreamy impossibility? Oh, definitely. It's, a, it's assumed, ipso facto absurd, we can never have that because everything is scarce. Do you think we maybe, there's a new book out, Damian. You like to talk about surplus. Y well, yeah, or the new book out with the fellow who set up the Singularity University uh -huh. with Kurzweil, it's called Abundance. Yeah. Or Fuller, who was a systems thinker, thought about transcending material abundance as an ontologic reality. Well. Collectively, you know. The economy is dependent on people buying and using more than they need. Uh, wait a minute, more? You think so? Yeah, well, these companies with advertising, 
try to make you think you need something. It makes me think of Vance Packard. Do you remember Vance yeah. Packard, the hidden persuader? How now they can lead us around by the people need a car yeah. in Manhattan? Yeah, pardon? How many people need a car in Manhattan? If they Not, well, Manhattan's a unique thing, you know, I think. Everybody else in the world needs a car, But almost. people, there were, after, the war, or after World War II, people were encouraged to buy homes in the suburbs. Developments uh, where they were well farms. True enough, or wherever they, and they were. They thought that oh, it's going to be a great life compared to living in the slums in the city. Well, and that was fine in the beginning, but when their teenage children grew up, they had nothing. Uh, I, I'm trying to follow what they, they had they nothing are. to stimulate their lives. Well, how about if somebody's got an autodidactic interest in everything? I don't think there'd be any end to what you could be really interested As in I and said, engaged you got a in doing. My main focus yeah. was understanding how the human mind evolved. Okay, that's really good. I've gotten really like to that. the point uh -huh. where I realized when you try to imagine what the early cavemen f felt and thought, the you had the concept of God, well, the yeah. leader of the clan or the group or the yeah, tribe, whatever. Yeah, right. When he died, mm -hmm. it was a big loss, and they naturally transported him as overseeing, as being a God who oversees him. Well, okay. not as a God, not yeah. as a, a universal. Yeah, right. That that's where they came with, up with ghosts and things like that. Okay, yeah. Like in the ghost in Hamlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. He yeah. directs Hamlet, mm -hmm. telling him that uh, his brother was It's getting part of far into human history from the caveman or from so, the first emergence, but yes, okay. Uh, the religion was in no sense an early science. Well, you're getting into religion, it's getting no, into no. social patterns. No, no, we, no. We don't know very but well what the you thought had, was of the early homo no, sapiens. But Mm. You just try to imagine people yeah. who yeah. don't have any science background, what they think, what their uh, illusions are, right. what their hallucinations are, right. and they're saying the dead person is really still around. Well, they might have had, if I may, Mel, just this is really what we're talking about, and you're a biologist, and you're Darwin and all, but I mean, um, the 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 uh, Homo sapien, I guess I, we were just saying they just discover every day, Mel. Mm -hmm. There comes over the transom some new breakthrough in every field. It's like a a Roman candle going off. Well, but they, they just a, found this uh, this yeah, uh, one point eight billion million years ago in Georgia, in the country, right. where, the former country of Georgia, that we are immediate ancestor to Homo sapien wasn't Homo habilis. I've been saying that. I apologize. Homo erectus. It was Homo erectus. But they've always once. said Homo erectus. Well, yes, but okay, okay. But here's, here's I had a more linear perspective. I was wrong. It was yeah. from Homo erectus. Here's what I, uh, erectus. Applying Darwin's principles. Yeah. You've heard of the Java man and the Peking man. Yeah, well, that's true. And in, that the, was, uh, in the textbooks, they were defined as Homo erectus. Uh -huh. Now, if Homo erectus originally came from Africa, uh -huh. that means they traveled yeah. to uh, Indonesia or to China. Right. Well, there, there, were, there, were, there was travel to Australia 50,000 years yeah. ago. Yeah, migration. Yeah. That's a critical point in it Dar is, Darwin it is. Uh -huh. for this new species to appear. They uh, don't appear ahead. out of nowhere. Okay, right. They appear out of the, the, the gene pool from which they emerged. Yeah. 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 They yeah. migrated for whether for scarcity of food or for territory or whatever. Mm. And as they moved into another environment, the genes are always in a state of flux. Uh -huh. And they changed in the new environment. Mm -hmm. so okay, yeah. Well, I, I did my doctoral work in geography. They had a book we used to read. It was really good. It was called Man's Role in Changing the Face of the Earth. And um, I had a professor. He was a leading geographer, I guess, in the world at the time, Carl Sawyer. And he'd, he had had a, uh, a thesis about early man. And mm -hmm. it's hard to know. We've got about 10,000 generations going back to, do you, we could agree maybe that the best date that seems to be for the emergence of our species is about 200,000 years. Right. Okay. And uh, he had And that a, took place in Africa. Oh yeah, it's a, we're all, in a sense we're all Africans, right. we should realize that. But, but he had a thing, early man, and it's conjecture in a way, but he had a seaside um, pattern for early mankind for two reasons. One was 
when we were on the Serengeti plane or the equivalent, we were probably for much of our tenure prey right. to the large cats. Because we were small. Yeah, we had no ability to fight off a tiger or right. a leopard. But that's why early man, right from the beginning, lived in groups. Well, okay. They, but anyway, he they said were never it, individual. He said it was the seaside and you could have headlands with cliffs and you could build, with <coughs> the knowledge, you could build a, a, a gate like at the headland and then also the seaside uh, so was a steady source, almost inexhaustible source of protein through clams. Mm -hmm. Endless clams mm -hmm. that were there and that there would have been a source of protein that could be got. Mm. It was interesting to me that it makes some sort of sense. But anyway, yeah. Uh, well, so agricultural revolution didn't 8, take place 10,000 10, years, years Yeah, ago. right, maybe 10,000. And, and, and I like to point out to my students yeah. that biblical references refer back to 10,000 years ago when God created the earth. Yeah, yeah. That's when the agricultural revolution got s established. Yeah, I did, yeah. I don't think it's just a coincidence. Uh, uh, the biblical referred yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> civil civilization, I think, means literally city dwelling. You couldn't have city dwelling if you had security from the food quest, mm -hmm. agricultural. Right. So we had emmer and icorn and wheat in the West, and we had rice in Asia, a mix in the Indus Valley. We had the ma maiz. Mm -hmm. in Mesoamerica. And another one, I did all my couple of years among the Aymara Indian peoples in Bolivia. That was a so another cultural hearth mm -hmm. where they went through from ne Paleolithic to Neolithic and yeah. agriculture based on the population. They grew their own food. They didn't yeah. have to go hunting for well, it there was or gathering Exactly, for and that was what made civilization exactly. surplus possible. Yeah. Now, let me we go back a little bit on Please do. Darwin and evolution. Okay, by all means. Go to an earlier organism called the trilobites, the ancestors. Well, it goes the, way back. Yeah. yeah. The ancestors to the clams, yeah. lobsters, etc. Yeah. You could distinguish them by the number of stripes or ridges they had on their shell. Okay. Uh huh. The, the, a different number meant one species. Yeah. Different. So, uh, let's say here in the Western Hemisphere, you had a certain number of stripes or ridges. And then you found another species that had a d different number. Mm -hmm. For argument's sake, let's say the early species had 10. Okay. And the uh, another species, a more advanced one, had 20. But they're all of the same genus or something? or how? Yeah, uh, there's yeah. different species. Species But they're still yeah. trilobites. Well, the, the, who was it that set up the the whole topology, the whole thing, uh, I can't remember his name, the, the classification of life forms. Uh, the, uh, it's a Russian. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, it'll come to me, but yeah, okay, yeah. And how you classify phylums and orders yeah. and you know, all that. Go, yeah, so uh, All uh, right, so they postulated that there had to be an intermediate trilobite uh -huh. that was, had a number of bridges in between 10 and 20. There's a logic to that, but yeah. yeah. It was so they started looking all over in the Western Hemisphere for that species with that specific number of ridges. Yeah, a missing link. A missing link. Yeah, right. So this guy, a, a biologist, a paleontologist, yeah. he said, well, maybe using Darwin's principles, Migration was an important part of evolution mm -hmm. that the intermediate species didn't stay in the Western Hemisphere. It migrated to Africa. Right. All right. Yeah. And then came back as a more evolved species with the 20. Had he done its evolving in the other place? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, so there's a mixture. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah. he uh -huh. started a program to search mm -hmm. for a trial of bite with those specific missing link ridges, mm -hmm. and he found them in Africa. I'll be damned. As he, where was he looking originally? Well, they or were all looking here. In North America? Yeah. Yeah, okay, right. Okay, but he right. found them in Africa. The trilobites are all over the world. Right? Yeah. yeah, but, but the, ahead, yeah. the different species, yeah. he was okay, right. pointing out that they migrated, 
became a different species, then migrated back here, and then became a third species. Oh, that's interesting. Do we, have a, do we have a pattern then that relates to the whole evolutionary process that right. we could repair it to to get a sense it. of what actually has happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with humans, mm -hmm. uh, you had the ape-like ancestors, yeah. and Apparently, then you got the yeah. Australopithecines. Well, the Australopithecine, I would yeah. say, that would be Lucy in well, Lucy four or seven one million years ago. They've discovered many different... Yes, uh, that's right, there are numbers. And they're trying to figure out which one was most linked to human... Well, I, I thought it was Homo habilis. I was wrong. I was saying... Well, I the said Australopithecus the was before Homo well, habilis. Well, yeah, but that was a different species. Yeah. But the, uh, sub, a missing link, or your trilobite, would have been Homo habilis, but apparently it was... Homo erectus all along, 1.8. They got this thing up in Georgia. And right. It was sh shaking everything up. Mm -hmm. But we're apparently descended of, uh, in a direct kind of way, I guess, from uh, uh, um, uh, Homo sapien is uh, from, uh, from uh, Homo erectus. And then we had a c unique capability, or at least we're postulating, a self-reflective consciousness that could ask some of the larger issues that apparently, or you can conjecture, wasn't available to Lucy or yeah, the Australopithecus. Th they've done experiments five, seven million years ago. They've done experiments with dolphins mm -hmm. and elephants. Yeah. Can't do it with whales; it's just too much. They put a spot on their forehead. Yeah, and they put a mirror. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Go ahead. And chimpanzees can do it. Wow. You put a mirror in front of chimpanzees. Put a mirror. Eventually, it learns that the mirror image. Is the chimpanzee itself? Really? Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dog, cat? How far down the chain? No, they don't do that. They do not. Okay, that's interesting in itself. Yeah. But with dolphins and elephants, the cetaceans. Yeah. Yeah. They, you put a mirror there. Or not elephants. And they've proven mm -hmm. that the dol dolphins and the elephants, yeah. the elephants can draw really? and paint. Interesting. Yeah. That they can recognize their own self-image in the mirror. Okay. But in terms of consciousness, that's a big term. No, that that's... Okay, yeah. But they're aware that they are themselves uh, in the mirror. Okay. It's not another animal. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, okay. that's interesting. That's very interesting. I hadn't realized that. Yeah, so okay. this yeah. evolved somewhere much earlier than uh, humans, uh -huh, this uh -huh. ability. But we, we had, it seems to me, like ants make nests and birds make nests it's and ants do... Autonomic. Thing. That's all. That's autonomic. all autonomic. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so forth. But then when we get to uh, Homo sapien, we did have a uh, those cave paintings in France. You know, they, they, they way deep in their bowels mm -hmm. of oh, a cave sure. and everything. It that reflected, and then they had, and then they also had a unique <coughs> that book. Back to that book that we studied, a big green book, still in print, called "Man's Role in Changing the Face of the Earth." All the natural resources were here when we came out of the cave. All the oil, all the, the soil, mm. all of the, everything was there. Mm. And we had a liaison between that state where we were embedded in nature, like the creatures mostly mm. are. We were embedded in nature. And then the ability to alter the reality through extended consciousness, through tools and technology that was unique. But... Making was, the world that was different. already present, right when the human brain was created. Um, you think? Okay, yeah. that's conjecture. We don't know with any. No, we can know, go back, back to other animals. Yeah, whose brains are as almost as complex, you know, yeah. and we can demonstrate what they can do. Mm -hmm. After all, they demonstrate chimpanzees take a a stick, a yeah. twig, yeah, with the termites, yeah, and remove the <laughs> leaves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And then put it in an ant hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a large. Yeah. Then one, one important fact that a lot of people overlook is it's not the adults who are the innovators; it's the adolescents who are the innovators. Okay, but there are limits to what a earthworm could do or what a cricket could do. Oh yes, you of know course. there are limits that right. seem to have gone I'm off the charts more like, with Homo sapiens. I'm talking more like monkeys and chimpanzees. Okay, that's in the primates. Yeah. Yes, and we're descended from uh, lemurs, I get or lemurs or uh, something, yes. Madagascar or something. Yeah, but way the, back. Yeah. The point is, the earlier animals that lived mostly by instinct. Yeah. 
But uh, and they're... we still have that in the reptilian core, the right. limbic system. But let me give you. We an have that in the, in our own, and in the midbrain. In yeah, but then let me give an example yeah. with lionesses. Okay. That uh, surprised the observer. And yeah. Me. Uh, they go hunting in groups. Mm-hmm. They do. And they say there was about five lionesses looking for a copy or a small deer. And they isolated one that looked like good prey. Mm-hmm. And four of them went chasing after it. The fifth one stayed behind. Stayed Is it behind. a common practice among no. prides? Or no. no. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. But let me explain. Yeah, yes, please. This is unusual for yeah. that behavior. But the lioness that stayed behind hid in the bushes, and the other four chased that into the direction of the hidden lioness. That's pretty thoughtful. That's it's right. It's like a posse. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. here you have lioness who are supposedly not too intelligent. Mm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, compared to chimpanzees. Yeah. But here they're able to catch prey. Yeah. By working in a group, there had to be some communication. Yeah, there had to be some awareness. Yes, right. What was going on? Yeah, and, and it, it occurred in a lower yeah. animal life. It did, but again, back to the thing that the ability to extend your consciousness through technology and tools is what we're encountering yeah, now. Yeah, well, that's unique instance. to us. That is unique. I guess there's some element of that. Yeah. Well, and and that was evolutionary developed. I guess. Uh, like we agree, more or less, the scientific community. Things keep changing. They keep yeah. coming up with new things. Well, uh, l- l- about 200,000 years, 10,000 generations we've been here. All right. <coughs> Let me give you a couple of things that uh, help explain some of this. Yeah. Uh, you agree Homo erectus was the one that discovered yes. fire? Yes. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Before that, how do you eat food? Well, you didn't cook it. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to, right? Yeah. The, this yeah. guy's thesis is yeah. that cooking food altered our digestive system or our digestive tract. Okay. okay. And gave us more energy, gave us more protein. N- protein. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because we could digest it. Right. And so a lot of changes occurred mm-hmm. once we discovered we could cook food and make it edible and chewable. Right. There would be a lot of changes that have come up, and now it, they're coming, you know. And and we're understanding things, and we're understanding—I mean, we get the telescope. We can see the orbit pathways of Jupiter. I mean, there's uh, a thing. Uh, and that knowledge and that knowing— is just growing exponential in our time as you and I sit yeah. here and talk in a unique yeah. way, perhaps evolutionarily significant mm-hmm. rather than just politically significant yeah. that all the news seems to be reporting on. Well, the, mis- <laughs> the mismatches between the inherited institutions and this qualitative new thing that's emerging, like what they called Gould, Gould, uh, Stephen Jay Gould and, and Ed Eldridge, punctuated equilibrium. Well, the still not proven completely. No, not completely. But it's a th- thesis. Yeah, it's a thought. Yes. And uh, how does the new appear? What are the condi- Are we in a situation where maybe collectively well, small we're coming into a new transformative yeah. sta- relationship ch- to the co- comparable to speciation? Yeah. Small changes occur, and, and as they build up, there's a cascade. Well, we've been, we've been building up for 200,000 years. But two things. I... When, when I was teaching uh, lenses. Lenses, yeah. Lenses. Yeah. In biology. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had to learn how to use a microscope, sure. et cetera, and then yeah. physics, you know, telescope. Mm. Mm. And I got to thinking, yeah. how did the idea of telescope evolve? Well, yeah, I, I think of Copernicus or yeah, well Galileo. But I'm going back before Copernicus. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. When do you, when do you think bifo- uh, not glasses, eyeglasses were invented? Damned if I know. I don't 1300. 1300. Before telescopes. Before telescopes, okay. So yeah, okay. We go back, we know that in uh, ancient Egypt, ancient uh, times, mm. they knew how to make glass. Okay. And okay. they made... A g- Glass vases, and yeah. curvatures, yeah. and you can find fragments of it. And I'm uh, uh, supposing that someone took a piece of broken glass 
that by that time Egypt had papyrus and had yeah. the hieroglyphic. Yeah. yeah. And people's vision as they got older, they didn't have eye doctors. I've noticed it seems to uh, get blurry. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yeah. So the print might, gets smaller somehow. Uh, yeah. Someone might have noticed. Yeah. That the curved broken glass. Mm -hmm. uh, I expanded, uh, enlarged mm -hmm. the print. Yeah. Uh huh. And over time, as more people observed that, and it was transmitted, mm -hmm. someone said, "Oh, we'll put two curved glasses together, and make a magnifying uh -huh. glass." Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I think along. Yeah, that would be one example of the accumulation of knowledge. Right. And passing it on. Yeah. And pa having civilization. Making magnifying glasses. Right. And now, right. not big ones. Mm -hmm. But what I'm imagining is that it was so useful and with people's sights getting dimmer as they get older, mm -hmm. they wanted a wearable kind of magnifying glass. Well, this is all a very likely thing because it did, after all, happen, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, in 1300. So how did it happen? Yeah, right, right. Now, sailors yeah, yeah. needed telescopes yeah. when they went on the ocean. And Copernicus needed that, or, or, or yeah, well, Galileo, we to see the pathways of Jupiter to show that we weren't the center of the universe, played hell on human consciousness. Right, but before we get to that, the, there were simpler telescopes used by sailors mm -hmm. to see distant lands. Right, okay, yeah, I guess, yeah. And if you reverse it, it makes things it look small. Yeah, you're right. Then in the 1400s, mm -hmm. they said, let's make bigger lenses. Right. They needed, Gal uh, was it Galileo or Kepler? Yeah, they made Copernicus? Uh, Copernicus, no. Mm. They made, or they had it made, bigger lenses to put in larger telescopes so they could see further okay. in the skies. Right, right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that was a development that took place three, four hundred years. And did that take place in Europe, particularly? We said we were using yeah, Europe, well, but were the there things similar to that going on? Because there was a whole lot of shaking well, going on over in China. Yeah, but you don't yeah. have um, any written information about okay, them using well, telescopes. Well, okay. You have Kepler, Copernicus, uh, they together. they did give us gunpowder, didn't they? They yeah. came up with gunpowder and they some other unique things. They didn't things. think of using it as a military weapon. No, I'm not sure what they used it for, for celebration. For celebration. Yeah. yeah. So when Galileo and Copernicus and Kepler mm -hmm. saw the value of calculating the heavens and coming up that uh, Earth was not at the center. That played hell on consciousness. Oh, yes. The church was ready Absolutely. to kill people. Absolutely. They locked them up. Yes. Hieronymus Bosch, those paintings. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. yeah, there was real alienation around that. Yeah. Now, if you, you reverse the telescope, you everything reverse gets smaller. Reverse the process, yeah. Now, people thought of ghosts or uh, angels, angels on a pinhead, mm. and they said maybe we can enlarge things that are invisible. You heard of Hook. Yeah, the, and Leuven Hook, Van Luke or something. Leuven Hook, yeah, Dutch, Leuven, yeah, and Joseph, uh, was it? Oh, Joseph Hook, Hook yeah. from England. Mm. They invented a lens to enlarge, what a drop of water or a drop of milk. I got it. I think it's a good idea. I think we ought to call it a microscope. Yeah, <laughs> micro a means joke. a yeah. million. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 call it my. Yeah. So they found in contaminated water and milk yeah. organisms that were invisible to right, the naked right, eye. Right. Mm. And uh, you could demonstrate that. Yeah. But to take it to the next step required another hundred years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that process has been going, in a certain sense we can, we don't really know very well what there was pre-civilization. There weren't records in that. I mean really we can postulate and anthropologists and paleontologists can think in that. But that process is, I would submit that process that differentiated humanity, <coughs> uh, uh, the self-reflective consciousness apparently was there, but then the ability to transform and make the world different. It's a big diff. I've used the example. Oh, it's a big different wandering around in the world, find a cave in which you can shelter, and building a house with air conditioning and a a furnace thing. and all that. That's and, a but big that is a process that's been part 
of the whole liaison of evolution itself. Right. And now we've been particularly unique at that. And now the question is, is that period, and that was an evolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. we, we came out of Homo erectus. Mm -hmm. There were no Homo sapiens uh, four million years ago. We no. were, I guess, evolutionarily contained in a Their future brains. iteration of what process was going on. Now, where do we stand now in the year 2013? And what's going on in terms of a qualitative transformation heralding that is relating to the time in which we live? We, 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 we have the news. We have the news of the day, this mm -hmm. tax bill, that tax bill, this Obamacare, this kind of stuff. We have all that. That's political. We have political things that mm -hmm. have evolved. And then are we coming to a point where there's a qualitative transformation in the reality, the ontology, or the epistemology of the context no. in which we talk? You no. do not think so. We no. still are caught up within the, his, the, the embrace of the nightmare that James Joyce had Daedalus call history. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Okay, you don't, okay, okay. Let me give you an okay. example. Oh, sure, okay, you, I, that's I, the assumption, that's yeah. the assumption. I used to have, um, I used to meet with this math professor from Queens College at the New School, mm -hmm. and he was pointing out to me events in 19 in the 60s, mm -hmm. events that occurred in Russia mm -hmm. was not a made aware to the American public until a month passed. Because it took, why? Okay, what's the? Well, there was control, but you yeah. also had to print the information. Yeah, right, right. You had right. to translate yeah, it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the American papers didn't pick up on an event until a month later. Okay, even in the in 1960s, you're in talking, 1960s. that recent. Yeah. That recent. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can get local news fairly quickly in well, those days. If you go back another hundred years, but or George Washington said to Tom, Thomas Jefferson, we haven't heard from our ambassador in France for about a year, Ben Franklin, and if we don't hear pretty soon, we ought to think about sitting down and writing him a letter. And it took, you know, months to get across mm -hmm. the ocean, exactly. and so now you do have Telstar and so forth. But yeah. go ahead, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, so even it with radio and television, it took a month the information yeah, okay, from, okay, okay, yeah, right, good. Now, mm -hmm. on the news, something that's happening thousands of miles away, you get instantaneous. Instantaneous, yeah, that's right. That's not part of an overall pattern that can add, uh, add up. How did we get from Homo erectus to Homo sapien? What was the process by which there was a qualitative, species-relevant, new emergence of a new thing, and why are you so quick to say we may not be at that moment now, in 2013, where we're coming not to a political change okay. or something, but there's something blowing in the wind, Bobby Well, Dillon how said. they know a skeleton, a skull, is Homo erectus and not Homo sapiens? Well, I don't know. I don't know how they measure it. They you know. look at a cast. Mm -hmm. They look, the, the brain weight, mm -hmm. they estimate, mm -hmm. was less in a Homo erectus than in a Homo sapiens. Yeah, sapien. yeah, that's true. So, yeah, yeah. one of the important factors is the size of the brain increased. Yeah, okay, that's true, that's true. Now, if going yeah. on that base alone, then the whales should be smartest or the elephants should They're be the smartest. pretty big whales, yeah. But most of the brain is used to send signals to the rest of the bodies because their bodies are so large. Mm -hmm. In okay. humans yeah. and Homo sapiens, Nature went the opposite direction. Go on. Human bodies are not large. Yeah. Okay. So more of the brain could be used for abstract reasoning. Well, we did perception. have the emergence of the, you know, prefrontal lobe. I mean, we, we had, because yeah. we have the limbic system. That's the reptilian core, it's called. Mm -hmm. That's flight and fight and survival mm -hmm. and yeah. like a lizard or something. And that's contained within our makeup. Yes, and then yes. we have the front, you know, the midbrain, and then we have the other, and that's all evolved. Okay. One of my favorite demonstrations in mm -hmm. my biology class is that, um, first of all, the folds had yeah. to increase yeah, okay. to fit a brain as large as an elephant into mm. a smaller skull space. Okay. We have more folds than any other 
species. I didn't realize that. Okay, that's interesting. And yeah. if you were able to spread the, the, the part of the brain that controls our intellectual functionings and, uh, oh, and okay. planning. Prefrontal. If, yeah, prefrontal. Mm. If you could spread it out mm. and flat, mm. and you did it with an elephant and with a whale, mm -hmm. ours would be the largest. No kidding. Okay, what does that tell us? That that part of the Cortex brain grew the most. Course. And how did that come to be? Is there any direction to evolution? Is there any purpose? Does it have any understanding? Was it just all random mutations and things? And it couldn't have been random mutations. Could not have been, okay. That's what would be argued uh, at a core way with the overall exception of Mr. Darwin? Yeah. Oh, and yes. it couldn't have been that, you say? Right. Okay, it couldn't have been what the Darwin theory essentially asserts, is that what you're saying? Or am I, I don't want to put words well, in your mouth. Let me put it this way. But it's a big issue, yeah. You can have, let me look at protein molecules, the yeah. three-dimensional structure, yeah. okay? Not every molecule fits in with each other. Mm. And what happens is, by selection, the things that folded have to match mm. with another substance. Right. Yeah. So bicameral. it's not, yeah. yeah, not bicameral. It's, no. well, well, it's like a fitting a puzzle. Okay, right. Okay, good enough. So yeah. they have to fit together. Uh -huh. They can't just be done by randomness. Uh, okay. But there's a, you know, it has to have. But this would be characteristic. But this would be characteristic of a careful study of the whole biological process. Exactly. Right. So and it can't be random. No, it can't uh, be it random. Can't be, what does that mean, can't be random? Or where does that take us? Because not everything fits in together. Right. We're talking about a three-dimensional object. Uh, okay. But also, let me just say that I guess 99.999% of all species that have ever existed have simply gone extinct. So? Right? No. We had a right. warming... Is that correct? Yeah. Or the huge majority... Yeah. Most everything has gone extinct. They've been false starts or something. Yeah. In a random pattern well, where one picks up. Not only that. And how does one pick up to come a new species and have a process going to the uh, culmination of mankind? Let me put it. They agree 500 million years ago there was no ice age. There was no ice. 90% of the species died off from the heat. Is that one of the great five extinctions? Yeah. Yeah. With that pre Cambrian. Yeah. Yeah. 10%. Mm -hmm survived. And when the climate changed back again and mm -hmm. cooled down, mm -hmm. that 10 percent became more diverse. Well, what is this saying in terms of your thing about, uh, you know, you thing can't be random? It just happened. They have to fit. Well, okay, can you spell it out a little bit? What does that mean? I mean, what does it mean? Uh, I know a fellow, uh, well, let's get some facts. It's 13 point, we, I guess we know now, with 13.7 billion years, mm -hmm. there's a big bang. Right. Maybe we in string theory are relating uh, well, to multiple no, universes. String theory still hasn't been proven. No, but it's there and uh, being advanced. Let I, me, let me okay, quiz but, you on a question. Oh, what a quiz, but I'm Which just, is older, the proton or the neutron? Damned if I know. You tell me, doctor, what is it? You know? The proton's all Okay. What does that tell us? That's evolution. That's evolution. We had to get to evolution out yeah. of an ev uh, out of a pr uh, an inorganic universe. As far <laughs> there were the p constituents of it, and that and that this what was three point four point five billion years ago. But the planet was all fiery, and there was nothing. And then the no, three point eight. I don't know if it was fiery, but well, what do you think? What nuclear particle was most prevalent at the at the time of the explosion. Uh, you mean the Big Bang? Yeah. I don't know, to tell you the truth. Uh, helium? They know. Uh, helium? I, I'm not no. sure. I'm no. not sure. Tell me. Not I, helium, I would came, helium came much later. Okay, yeah, but they have all come. Yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying... In the first one, in the, I forget now. In the now. first nano or femto or whatever, billionth of a of Se the time, sec yeah. second, the first nuclear particles was the neutrinos. Okay, okay. And okay. an enormous number of them. Yeah. And then s some of them combined mm -hmm. to form electrons. Yeah. Quarks. Oh, that's and okay, okay, yeah, go on, yeah. And then the electrons, uh, some of them became protons. Now, how did that, that all happen not randomly? Not, it wasn't random. Well, not random. I can't see why it could. You don't think the universe can be understood that way? No. The way Darwin would have proposed in yeah. terms of evolution. No. You can't. What does that tell us then 
in terms of how did it all happen or how is it that it happened? I mean, it did happen. We're here. Yes. And the world is here in yes. this world, in the university, and we're understanding it more and more. And it was about 3.8 billion years ago that the constituents, as I understand it, there's a fellow in New York doing research that life. I mean, Robert Shapiro, I don't know if you know. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, real good guy and everything. He's doing research on how uh, the, not nothing, nothing so compi so uh, in a, in a non-organic as we can understand, we're all stardust in a way, at things that are created in the universe and are co 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 uh, brought into the earth uh, pattern and so forth, but there was nothing so uh, as RNA. But the constituents of what was to become RNA, which is going to lead to finally to DNA and get the whole organic problem. They, 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 they still were, haven't solved that problem. No, they're still doing it, but they're, they're closing in on what that would have been. There's different theories and things. But once, they, so because that was not, that, that that occurred, that they got the DNA and they got to the organic process. Once you get to the organic process, can it all be understood just evolutionarily in terms of uh, well, you random have, mutations you and have, so forth? You have, still have to explain. Oh, Originally, that first, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of organic soup from oh. all those interactions. Yeah, yeah. Not only uh, inorganic material, but in uh, organic Well, how compounds. did the organic material get there to be in the soup? Because how did it come? When when there was uh, nothing organic pre 3.8 no, billion years ago when no that, there was what are you talking there about? was carbon no no the the at, no those are constituents of an organic process yeah, right those are material you got organic they're not organic yeah. in themselves you got organic compounds yeah once the element carbon was built. Okay, you do have in chemistry, you did chemistry, yeah. uh, organic and PCAM and yeah. all that. There's right. difference, quantity, Co quality. Carbon no. is unique for organic molecules. Okay, okay, right. You okay. can't make an organic molecule from iron or silver. But when you say it isn't Darwinian or it isn't chance and necessity or, you know, what is it's it? It's chemical. How, how did everything come to be? I mean, what's the premise if it's not done along the line of mutation? Once you started making organic molecules, right? they had their own stereochemistry, their own three-dimensional structure. Right, okay, yeah. You want to create a living cell that could reproduce. Yeah. That didn't take, took a long time. Yeah, millions of years. Yeah, yeah right, but, right. But you had organic molecules created first. Well, where did the organic, well, okay. Came from the interactions of the atoms. The, okay. In, uh, in outer space. Okay, yeah. And when, well, once you created carbon, you started, carbon shares atoms, uh -huh. shares electrons. Uh -huh. So you can build larger molecules mm -hmm. with carbon skeletons. Once you got it going. Yeah, know. once you yeah, got it going. Like kickstarting. Yeah, right. right. Now, there was nothing there to consume the carbon molecules. Mm -hmm. They kept increasing in amounts. And then eventually some of these carbon molecules Created RNA, not uh, DNA, RNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the constituents of what was to do become RNA is what uh, Mr. Shapiro's working on. Yeah. Toward. Nothing well, so complex as RNA. But the biggest question they yeah. have is how did cells. Well, that's a big jump. That's right. That's a huge jump. Well, they've been doing research mm -hmm. on cell membrane formation. Uh -huh. Back to Mr. Thomas, Louis Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Mm -hmm. um, uh, going back 20 years ago, they talked about RNA being a critical molecule mm -hmm. in the cell membrane formation. Okay. Uh -huh. There were certain RNA molecules that allowed them to create a sac around the organic molecules that was in the atmosphere or in the outer space. Okay, well that's part of the re uh, research that's going on. That's yeah, part of the so they thought maybe it came from silica or from... Right, uh, so somebody had or clay or something? RNA, yeah, 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 clay or from mm. RNA enzymes. Yeah. Enzymes were existed uh, independently. Mm. So once you started making a sac mm. to enclose the organic molecules, mm -hmm. we're not talking about nucleus or genes yeah, or anything. Yeah, okay. Once you made that living thing, yeah. You're off to the races. You're off to the races. Right. Now, okay. So uh, back again to the question, I guess it wasn't fair because it's so facto absurd, apparently. 
We live in the year 2013. I'm getting confused <laughs> with the politics and the things that are going on. Well, and if you talk to politicians, they know nothing. Uh, well, uh, nothing. Well, they're educated. They have no, but we so th we have that, and then we have culture. We have culture coming. We have it began, I guess, you know, with well, Mesopotamia and all that, and then yeah. then you had Rome for a thousand years, and then you had uh, and my basics is yes. And that's still true today yeah. as it was 20,000 years I, ago. I agree with you. I agree. Well, I don't know, 20. That clans, I, clans, of people yeah, live together, yeah. mm. develop a, a language they communicate with. Right. About 5,000, I in, think, In languages. environment, yeah. 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 The tribal tendencies still persist today. I agree with you. I think that's probably the you case. Look at the war. Yeah. You've well, got the, Syrians. You've got... Uh, Sunnis, mm. Shiites, yeah. Christians, Druze. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And, 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 but you do, you, 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 yeah. So, what I'm trying to make a point, I'm trying to look at history now. Okay, we're talking about evolution and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to reach for, find, if I can, something that begins to see the evolutionary process in terms of which we are all caught up. Uh, with institutions that have been built within a context of extended consciousness to make the world different, that is qualitatively a context that might make it possible to tra transcend uh, certain presumptions that underlay all of our institutions, mm -hmm. one of which was material scarcity. There's not nearly enough. There's not nearly enough. Well, there's two things that will happen. And is it possibly that with our collective capability, nanotechnology is just over the horizon? As people can become more wealthy, yeah. they have fewer children. Well, that is true. That's encouraging. In, in 1840, they did a statistical thing. Mm -hmm. They found that the French population, instead of growing with, with getting industrial revolution, mm -hmm. it was decreasing. Mm -hmm. And the explanation is people's standard of living's increased, so they didn't want five, six, seven children. Well, that's encouraging. I mean, that, that, that is understandable. And if you uh, extrapolate to the present, how many families are there that have one or two children? Many. Yeah. Yeah, there are many. Now, in the, in the, in the more developed a, you are. A hundred years ago, everyone had seven children. They did, and larger, and they would have that because so many of them died. Well, People would die in infancy yeah, with alarming regularity, and that's they had for, to make sure their gene pool carried on. For the on. poor generation, maybe the lower middle. Roosevelt had President set, Roosevelt? Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt, yeah. Had five children. Mm -hmm. Did he need them all? Joe Kennedy had, was it six children? Yeah. Did they need They had money to... Well, they were, yeah. They didn't practice birth control. Well, they didn't have it. They had, but the pill was. But a they had thing. the money. Yeah. No, but th that's to talking. support that. Yeah, but we're not. I'm. I'm trying not to. I mean, I may be wrong, and it doesn't make sense. And it's assumed, absolutely ipso a facto, to even think about it, that we may be with our collective capability. We now have an ability to affect the environment in ways that we have just uh, yeah. not ever had in any yeah, time uh, other than the time that, you and I sit and that talk. That will involve a decrease in the population size. Well, uh, you mean the fact that people decide not to have large families? That's right. I did a thing with a guy who I did that, brought that up one time. It was all Fuller. I was talking, Fuller's one of the yeah, main Buckman's people. That they, yeah, a major guy and everything. And I just brought up the, uh, this idea, which I'm trying to get the idea of. And to do it really quick, uh, people are sick of hearing it to watch the program. But we, one of the leading edge things that gave political legitimacy to any group that was in control and had legitimacy, whether it was the emperors of Rome or the kings of the mm -hmm. feudal or it's the banks and the bankers and whatnot now mm -hmm. and everything, it was the gun. It was essentially whoever had the biggest club could go hit other people on the can't head. Do that and anymore. that was the source of political, it, it remains. Still, it's called realpolitik. Can't it's do called, that anymore. Yeah, but that's called, it's being done as we talk today. Who? It is who's got the 
No, not it's a little too nuanced. It has to be this country can't even tell no, it's not. No, it's not just the that's the source of realpolitik rather than yeah. some idealism or right. something. Okay. okay, or the spiritual things take care of the least among you. They don't care about the least among you. They don't care. They care about the in group that they are part of, and they got the guns to back it up, or the ability to influence consciousness through pi public relations and education and all that sort of thing. But that's reached <coughs> a point now, existentially new. Because the weapon systems that have underpinned political legitimacy. The reason they lived in the castle is they had the soldiers and the guns mm. and things like that to enforce it. That's mm. what it is, nothing more than that. Well. And now you've got a group that does that. And now those weapon systems that underpin it all, it's all military, uh, now anymore. have become species lethal. We can eliminate the whole Homo sapiens species. Well, do you think do that's that. true? No, don't say we're not going to do it. Why? Because we won't? I mean, it's got nothing to do with logic or reason or anything. Yeah, but you're I, talking about an individual like Hitler, is, yes. No, but there is no Hitler today. No, but you're talking about a different. The, you're talking about we have the capacity. We have. We the did not have the capacity. Hitler yeah. did not have the capacity yeah, well, to wipe out tried. the species. Right. No, he didn't. We don't. Out. We're not. We. You're avoiding. You're avoiding. Not avoiding it. We've had the capacity to wipe out the species since the end of World War II. No, 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 no. We couldn't have done it that recent. It wasn't until about, even in 1962, when we came so close, instead of Khrushchev backing off and all that, we still would have been a few scraggling human survivors. Mm -hmm. Trident submarines now can wipe out. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the weapons capability, yeah. if it's unleashed, but like Sarajevo in 14, but that could wipe out the entire yes, homeless. Yes, yes, Do you yes, think yes. that's true? It's a, it's a question is of it capability. True? No, it, the capability exists. The capability exists. It does. It, it has used. never existed before yeah, in all it, of human it history. It will not be used. Well, then why? Because Why? You, because we're rational? And no, we're never not doing, because no, we're rational. No, why? Why would it? If no. you look at Clause, what he oh. said, it's an extension of war. Yeah, yeah. it's an extension, a diplomacy it's extension of war or the other way. Yeah. 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 Countries, even Hitler went to war because of profit. Is there a profit in going to war? Now you're, tr you're assuming reason. I'm not talking about anything that's reasonable. I'm talking but, about capability. But the now, the opposite, is that possible? No, it's not possible. Yeah, we, we do not have it's weapon not systems. It's not possible. They, they don't exist. There aren't systems. It exi Wave the weapons. weapons exist, but it's not possible. Well, wait a minute. If the weapons exist, that's a capability. No. It's not a real. Uh, it's not a real. It's capability. No, no. You don't think, oh, well, then, then, then because that. Because. Uh, all oh. these weapons are under control of large numbers of people. Oh, good, rational And people. you can say, no. Mm. You can say they're not the, the seed for mass, com, com, uh, mass suicide yeah. is not there. Yeah, okay. Well, listen, one of, the, one of the greatest tyrannies of this world is time, and there's limits on time, and we've run out of time, Mel. Sorry. Sorry, we'll have to take this up on another occasion. Come to our party. We can carry on with others like that. Okay. It's been your pleasure to have the perceptions of Mel uh, Berkowitz, a biologist and uh, autodidactic thinker on many, many equations. I still have on the occasion. We may be coming into the early stages of punctuated equilibrium, coming into a, 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 a new relationship in the cosmos that's comparable to a new speciation, not just a political change. But that's something that's soon to be ipso facto absurd. But anyway, we didn't get to that. Your pleasure to have its perceptions. We invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. Mel, thanks for all the good work. Look forward to seeing you in the holiday season. Try yeah. to stay out of trouble with all your youthful exuberance. Uh, i got to keep seeing doctors. Okay. <laughs> thanks for viewing. We'll be coming back uh, again tomorrow. Okay, thanks again, Mel. Thanks. Yeah, really good. Okay. <laughs>